I'm going to talk about my C-section, so my first pregnancy, first birth. And I'm going to try to be as detailed as possible because I know for me, my C-section wasn't planned or anything. So details would have helped me. <laughs> right now I'm getting ready for my friend's birthday. Throughout my pregnancy, it was relatively healthy. I didn't have any issues per se. Like I just had regular symptoms. I didn't have preeclampsia. I didn't have any of that. And uh, 38 weeks when I went to my appointment, because once you get to the end of your pregnancy, you start going to the OB every single week. So I was going every week and at 38 weeks, she was in position. So her head was down, she was ready to go. I asked them to check my cervix and she was saying that I wasn't like zero centimeters, but I wasn't at one either. So after that, I was just focusing on like, okay, let me try to help this labor along. So I was walking and exercising, like swimming. You know those stationary bikes that you move your arms? So I was doing that, bouncing on the ball, doing stretches, all of that fun stuff, drinking red raspberry leaf tea. And one day I would just feel a lot of tightness like in my back. And I've never had contractions before, so I didn't know what it was. Like I called the hospital and I was asking like, what do contractions feel like? Because right now I feel weird. Like, I don't even know how to describe it. I just feel weird. I don't know if these are contractions or what's going on. And they told me that they can check if I'm in labor. So I can go into the hospital and check if I'm in labor or I can just wait it out. So I had an appointment the next morning. So I was just like, you know what? I know that contractions are supposed to get worse. And right now I'm not in pain, really. Like I just felt tightness. And so I was like, I'll just either wait until it gets worse or just until my appointment in the morning. So I waited until the next morning and I was like, okay, like I'm feeling like it's gonna be three centimeters. I was super excited. So my doctor was checking my belly and measuring it. And she was like, dang, like your belly looks like weird <laughs> because it didn't look like perfectly round. It was like oddly shaped. And she was saying like, oh, you're having contractions right now. And I was like, really? Like, I can't even feel it. Because I heard that when they start, they start feeling like period cramps, but I did not even feel it. And so, dang, this wax is too hot. Like how you feel right now, your stomach getting hard, that's a contraction. And I was like, what? It took her a while to find her heartbeat, which Salem, my daughter, like she would move around a lot, like so much. I never had an issue with her not moving. Dang, the wax just fell. With her not moving, because this girl would move a lot. And, but this time it was extra hard for her to find her heartbeat. So she found it and her heartbeat was fine. And when it was time for her to check my cervix, she made a weird face. Like, you know, she stuck her fingers in it. She was like, let me go get you an ultrasound. I was like, okay. At the office that I go to, they have an ultrasound tech like right there mom was with me and she was like like that's weird for her to like not even tell you like how many centimeters you are or anything like that and for her to just be like ultrasound right now so i went to the ultrasound room and this girl decided to flip over her butt wasn't down her feet were down so she had her her feet like not up here they were down so when my doctor went to check my cervix to see how dilated I was, she felt her feet. And she was telling me that's why I went to get you an ultrasound because sometimes like, like you're supposed to feel, feel it smooth, which is the baby's head. Sometimes you feel like the butt, which is so cute, like a little butt. And sometimes like it can be like an umbilical cord or a hand or a foot. And that's why I went to get you an ultrasound to see what exactly it was that I felt because it was like a little, like a little, little foot. And I just started bawling out. Like I wanted to like keep my composure, but once I saw like her positioning, which like, I remember I saw it and like, she didn't even have to say like, oh, she's not in position. I just started losing it because I was like, all of the preparation that I did and I never prepared for a C-section that, 
that I didn't care to look into. Like I looked into different kinds of vaginal births, whether it's unmedicated, medicated, all of that. But I never looked into a C-section because I was like, why if I'm not gonna have one? And I was devastated. So they went and they brought me into a separate room to talk about my options. I was questioning like everything because I was like, God, like, why do some women have these beautiful births? And like, I, I'm gonna have to get sliced open. Like, I wanted this and why didn't I get it? Like, I was just, and I was like, you know what? Maybe God is trying to protect me from something. Like, I don't know. And the doctor came in and they were saying, I'm not gonna say that it's impossible for her to flip over, but at her size, for her to bring her feet up to here. And for her to do one 180 is very unlikely. And like in my mind, I was like, I'm already having contractions. This girl moves around a lot, so maybe she can flip over, but I have to be in labor and for her to be in the right position for me to push her out. Like, what if she's not? And I'm going into labor and I have to get an emergency C-section anyway. Like, what's the point of going through, through all of that when I can just might as well plan it? So the doctor there, brought in the doctor that would do my surgery so the doctor of the office and he was saying that the incision will be very small it will be like this it will leave a small scar and he was showing me on my stomach and everything he's amazing like he was so good he was explaining to me like don't feel bad because you know you didn't plan this birth like the good thing is not because of the baby's health or your health like it's just the positioning and that's it and i was just like yeah and, you know like at least i worked out so it can help with the recovery. And he's like, oh, so you're like like an athlete. He was saying that like, oh, what I can do because I used to be a plastic surgeon, I can sew up like your diastasis, which is the separation between your abs. He's like, it's gonna be more pain. And I was like, who cares? You're gonna already be in there. Like, sew me up. <laughs> we planned it and that was on a Thursday. So at that point I was exactly 39 weeks. And I was like, so how does this work? How do I schedule it? And they're like, well, it's just going to be during a weekday. So just let us know. We can wait until next week. But I was like, dang, I'm already having contractions. I don't want to possibly go into labor over the weekend, have to go in there. And it's like, like, a lo loco. And they have to cut me open, you know? So I was like, okay, I'll just do it tomorrow. Especially because my husband works mainly Monday through Friday. So I was just like, it'll be perfect because I'll have to be at the hospital for two days. After that, that I was like, what time can I do it? And they said they had an opening at 12 in the afternoon. So I was like, okay, perfect. And after that, my mom was with me again. So she drove me to the hospital that day. So the day before, when it's a planned C-section, they go there and they set you up. Like they give you the tour. They did all the paperwork beforehand instead of, I guess, after. I don't know how they do it for other births because again, this is the only baby I've had. But I did all of the paperwork beforehand, basically, you know, them explaining like what's going to happen and stuff. Oh, dang. This is why I wore a dirty shirt. So I did all of that. They told me to like not shave my legs or wash my hair. And I was like, I already did that. Like, because when I started feeling the pain and I was like, am I in labor? And I was like, well, I'm going to wash my hair. I'm going <laughs> to shave my legs. Like I was just. And they're like, oh, it's okay, whatever. So I like did two braids. So I was like, my hair's out of my face. Like I'm ready to go. And they gave me this soap. Oh, you know what? I have an extra one. It wasn't necessarily this one, but you see it comes with like a little soap and a sponge. And they told me to clean my whole body with that before I went to sleep and before I went to the hospital. So they gave me like a little bodeguita. I don't, I don't have anything else. Actually, yes, I do. It was like around this size. So they told me to clean my whole body with it before I went to sleep and right before I went. I couldn't eat anything past five in the morning. So I think it was like eight hours that I couldn't eat or drink anything, like including water, which was so hard. So that day I like went to stick and shake. I ate because I was like, this is going to be the last meal I get while I'm pregnant. So I was trying to stuff myself because I'm like, I can't eat for so long. And I even woke up at like four in the morning and my mom, man, she's so amazing. She made me pancakes with fruit and I ate yogurt. I had time to eat and everything. 
so I wouldn't go there starving, which I still was. That morning, which was something that was really nice, honestly, that my whole family came. Like my family, Daniel's family, everybody came because I was just about to have the baby, which I think is something cool that doesn't really happen when you have like, when you're going into labor, you can't like, okay, everybody come on over. Like I'm about to go give birth and you're in all this pain. Like I wasn't in pain. Like I was having contractions, but they didn't hurt. And so it was cool that my whole family, my mom and all of the baby's aunts and uncles and stuff, everyone got to come and take pictures with me before I went to the hospital. And I was like smiling, taking pictures. It was really nice. That's something you can't really do with other birds. So that was something really nice. So we went and we drove to the hospital to get there a bit early. They wheeled me up to my room. And after that point, I was waiting a long time because I was supposed to get it at 12, but you know how hospitals are, like emergencies happen. Um, like I guess a woman had to have an emergency C-section or something. And so my stuff was pushed back until two. So I was so thirsty. Like I'm thirsty right now. Like I was, oddly enough, I wasn't freaking out or anything. Like I just, I don't know. Like I just didn't believe, I guess, what was happening. And I was just like, no, eh, whatever. Like my mom was there and my husband was there and we were just chilling. They gave me, um, some pills, I think it was like Tylenol. So maybe like the medications when they're going in, it doesn't hurt. The only things I really had on my birth plan was that like, I don't want them to take the baby out of the room. If they have to, I want either me or my husband to be there. And which I will do this next time, but I was like, whatever makes it easier for you guys. So I had IVs set up, like I had all these cords all over me, which I will not do next time. Because, you know, you're gonna be holding the baby and doing all of these things. So they put it on your arm here which hurt so bad. And the reason you can't eat is because, I don't know, your stomach's gonna get cut open. I don't understand, but you can look that stuff up. Once the nurse came in and they went to start drugging me up, you know, like they started giving me that medicine for like anxiety to calm me down. Daniel was the one that was gonna come with me for the C-section. And so they started getting him all gowned up. And once the nurses left, I started freaking out. Like, I felt like I couldn't breathe. Like, I had the hospital gown on and I was like taking it off. I was like, oh my gosh, I can't. And I was freaking out. I was like, call the nurse, call the nurse. And the nurse came in and I was like, I think I'm having a reaction to the medication. Like, I feel horrible. And oh my gosh, this was the sweetest thing ever. She got down like on my level. She was looking at me. She's just like, hey, like, I've had two C-sections and i had the same feeling before like you're just really nervous and it's something that doesn't really go away she's like you're gonna be okay she's like like i've been through it like i think it was two or three c-sections she's like i felt like this every time and i was like oh my gosh. and that feeling was horrendous like if, i was like i don't want to do this again i don't want to have kids anymore it was so bad so I was in there for a little while longer, like I wanna say like half an hour. And then they're like, okay, we're gonna start wheeling you into the room. And I was like, where's my husband? Like, I want him to come with me and stuff. And they were saying like, we're gonna bring him in right before we start. And I was like, okay. And so they brought me into this room that I felt like a whole science experiment. It was like a huge light in the middle and the table and they had all of their instruments and stuff which like everything was out in the open for me to see the nurses and everyone was so kind but i just i guess maybe because i was nervous like i just hated that feeling i was like oh my gosh i feel like an experiment and the nurses were like i love doing c-sections <laughs> they're like these are so fun i was like they're like i'm glad that you're having fun but like i'm not excited <sighs> this is oil to get extra wax off ah. So there was two nurses there. So the anesthesiologist and I don't know, maybe the surgical tech. I don't know what her position was. I didn't care to ask, honestly. They were explaining to me, which I love because one of the things I put on my birth plan, I was like, I want you to tell me everything that's going on. Explain to me the science. I don't care because I'm like that. Like when I'm getting like my blood drawn or whatever, I have to be like looking. 
So this was really scary because it was in my back. I can't be like, what y'all doing? <laughs> but she was explaining that I'm gonna go give her, a, the first nurse, a big hug and I'm gonna tuck my belly in, right? So I'm gonna round out my back, tuck in my belly. So I, she told me to give me a really tight hug in my lower back. And so I was trying to stay still and not move because I was like, what if I get paralyzed? And she was saying the first injection is like to numb the area. So it's gonna feel like burning. And then the second one, you're gonna feel pressure and we're gonna have to lay you down quickly because it affects really quickly. When they injected the first one, it felt like a really tiny needle. Like I guess the ones that they put in your gums when they're gonna do stuff on your gums. And it did, it felt like they were putting hot sauce into my skin, like literally, like that's the best way I can describe it. And the second one, that's exactly what it felt like. A lot of pressure, like as if someone was like going like this, right here, like right here, really hard. And then they laid me down, like <laughs> they were just like, okay. And then they both laid me down really quick. And if you're pregnant, you know, like laying down flat on your back, you get nauseous and stuff. And I was like, can I put my head up a little bit? And they're like, no. I was like, dang. And they put my arms to the sides like this. Like they literally had special tables just for me to put my arms to the side. <sighs> I'm gonna change. Then after that, she put the catheter in. Cause again, you can't feel anything. So you can't feel yourself pee or anything. So that went in my pee pee hole. <laughs> so I didn't feel that at all. And then I think the anesthesiologist, so she was standing by me the whole surgery and everything. And she was just like, she broke a popsicle stick. The popsicle stick was this size, right? And she snapped it in half. So one side was obviously really jagged. And she was like, okay, do you feel this? And I was like, yeah. And she's like, do you feel this? And I was like, yes. So she's like, I'm gonna rub the jagged side from your foot all the way up and let me know when you feel it. So I felt it like up here. I was like, what the heck? Like, I'm really numb. And she was like, yeah, that's good. <laughs> uh, it was just like, you know, we don't want you to feel anything. Which, spoiler, I did. I forgot, that's like the special liquid that they put on you that is like brown to not get infections or something. And then they set the the blind, the big curtain up to keep that area sterile, which that made me start freaking out because I was like, I can't see anything. And I like to see everything. And then all the doctors came in, like my OBGYN and all of that other stuff. They came in and I was like, where's my husband? Because I was like, what if they just take the baby off and he's not here? And they were saying like, you know, the surgery, like them cutting me open on its own is gonna take like five minutes but them stitching me up is gonna take like 45 minutes i was like okay where's my husband they're like we're gonna bring him in right before we start and i think after that point i was probably so annoying because i was like where is he where's my husband where's my husband because like i didn't feel anything and i couldn't see anything and they're just like counting the equipment and all this stuff they're like you guys ready you ready you ready and i was like no where's my husband finally they brought him in and i was like oh my god And he was like, yeah, I was scared too. Cause he was just outside waiting, I guess. And I don't even know how I should do my hair. And they're like, all right, we're gonna start. And what I love is that the doctor, which I love him, his name is Dr. Raji. He's in the land. If you're in the area, he's a really good doctor. And he was explaining like what he was doing as he was doing it, which helped. So he's like, okay, I'm starting. And I was like, and I felt nauseous because I was laying flat, you know? So they were slicing me open and I didn't feel the actual cutting, but I felt them tugging, like they weren't doing this, you know? But I felt like the tugging on my organs, like my ribs and I, I felt all of it. And I was on those tables, like those wiggly tables and I was wiggling like crazy. And my husband and I were like, oh my gosh, like what the heck? because homegirl got freaking stuck. Like they cut me open and this little girl got stuck. <sighs> and so, bruh, they had to suction her out and everything, man. <sighs> this girl, they were struggling to get homegirl out because I weigh like 110 pounds 
and she came out eight pounds nine ounces which is um humongous for a little girl like me they took her out and when i saw them like pick her up and put her in the little incubator it was the most unreal feeling ever because obviously i know that i'm pregnant and i have a baby but it's like it was crazy to, to see i'm like she was in there this whole time and she didn't cry right away, which I don't know, maybe I was crying too hard to even care. Because I was like, oh my gosh, I was like, baby, that's my baby. And then she started crying and it was like the most beautiful sound I've ever heard in my whole life. That feeling was phenomenal. And uh, it was short lived. <laughs> and they went to bring her over to put her on my chest. And I was like, get her off. And I was like, I can't breathe. And I was like, I'm gonna die. And they're like, what's happening? And I was like, trying to touch myself. And they're there putting my arms down and I'm trying to get up. And I was like, my head's gonna explode. Apparently my blood pressure went up and the anesthesiologist was like doing her stuff. But I was like, I'm gonna die. I'm gonna die. And Danielle's like, you're gonna be okay. And after that point, I literally don't remember anything. Like when I say I don't remember, I don't remember. And apparently, even my doctor said this, that she thought it was beautiful, which like, I guess glory to God, that I started saying Bible scriptures. Like, I don't know what I was saying. And I asked Daniel, I was like, do you remember what the scriptures were? And he was like, no, like, I guess just like, you know, I could do anything through Christ who strengthens me, um, stuff like that, which I was like, whoa, that's pretty crazy. But anyway, they were saying like, oh my gosh, you're so tiny. like. Your stomach and all this stuff is just so little. And they told me, like, they're like, feel. And I just felt it so flat and then a big bump, obviously. Because they were like, that's your uterus. They're like, feel, wow. And they were saying that when they sewed up the diastasis, they're like, there was almost nothing to sew up. Like, you're so little. <laughs> Which I was like, I guess, thank you. <laughs> and so once they, they finished sewing me up and I didn't die, I guess, um, they wheeled me into the recovery room and I couldn't stop shaking like not shivering like literal bail shakes and uh, they just said that that's like an after effect of it like it's okay like don't try to stop it just let it happen girl and my mom was there and she was like you know obviously really scared because my my daughter just got cut open I guess so um and they were checking my blood pressure and they had to hold my arm down and they had to keep taking it and taking it and taking it and taking it and taking it which is crazy because like months later when i had to get my blood pressure taken i started freaking out because it reminded me of that but regardless here they started pushing down on my stomach and the first like the first time i didn't really feel it because again i was just so numb but they were opening up my legs and changing my diaper and <laughs> they started bro it felt like they were trying to touch my spine with my belly button or something oh my gosh it was so painful and i was like oh like it hurts so bad and they're like i'm sorry like i have to and they're like i'll come back to push on your stomach i was like no it hurts so bad and then one other nurse came to help me with breastfeeding which i thought i was feeding right which surprise surprise i wasn't every hour half hour something like that to put her on my boob and make sure to alternate and she told me to hold her in a football hold which was amazing because if I would have her here I was sewed up to here so it hurt so much right here so I was holding her like this way which was awesome and at that point I asked them you know for Daniel to cut the cord and everything so what they did, they cut it really long so that he could cut it still. So that was really sweet. Yeah, they gave Salem like the medicines, like the eye cream and stuff so she wouldn't get an infection in her eyes. And something pretty crazy about C-section babies that I didn't even think about. Well, I don't know because I didn't do any research on it. But when they're coming out of the vaginal canal, it pushes out all of these like the liquids and the amniotic fluid and all of that stuff that is inside of their lungs that isn't supposed to be there so it just squishes it out with a c-section that doesn't happen so like this girl was like choking and gargling up and they're like that's fine you just go like this with a syringe put it in there and suck it out <laughs> which is 
so weird so crazy and so I was in there for I don't know how long and they brought me food which I didn't even it's crazy because I was starving and I wasn't even hungry at that point because I just went through so much I was like man I don't care about nothing and so but I still ate it was like broccoli and mashed potatoes or something like that and I still ate it and I was just like I'll insert pictures um but I was like I didn't have those butterflies and oh, I forgot about all my pain. I didn't feel like that. I still remember. <laughs> so if you remember everything, don't don't get surprised because they tell you as soon as you hear the babies cry, as soon as you see your baby's face, you forget everything. I didn't. And I was mad because I was expecting to forget. And I remembered all of it, so I was like, um, thank you for lying to me, everybody. After I could finally get released from that room, they put me into my actual recovery room that I would be in for forever. And I had to lay down for a minimum of eight hours, which was torture. Like, I wanted to move, but I couldn't. And I could, I started being able to feel, but I couldn't move. Like, it's like whatever bones and muscles I had, goodbye. Like from my core down, I, nothing. Like I couldn't, I could barely move my toes. I couldn't even speak at this level. Like even whispering hurt. I was just like, like a potato. It was horrible. And so they came and they were giving me, I think it was like ibuprofen and Tylenol or something like that fancy terms that it was one for inflammation and one for pain every two hours through my IV and it was painful every time they did it through my IV I felt so, oh my gosh it hurts so bad and they had those like they had these like pillow things around my legs that would massage them Ooh, hey. I still had the catheter in there and yeah i was pretty much stuck there for so long and i was just like can i please move can i lay on my side can i do anything they're like you can try to lay on your side but a lot of women say that they feel like their guts are gonna spill out and i was like bro i know my guts aren't gonna spill out and i turned to my side and i felt like my guts were gonna spill out like i felt like it was like a, my guts were in a bucket and i was like that craziest feeling ever it was my butt was numb it was oh my gosh and eventually after the eight hour mark i was like please like i just want to move some somewhere and daniel my husband and this other male nurse had to help me because i could not move uh sit on the edge of the bed so to go from laying down to sitting on the edge of the bed which was so difficult but i was like okay thank you and i just stayed there for a while and I had to call them back to lay back down. And I was just like kind of stuck there for, I guess like the first day, that's when I was really like, I could just not move. The first night, a nurse came in and she's like, okay, let's go pee. Like, so they took out my catheter a few hours before and she's like, okay, let's go pee. And I was like, I really don't feel like I need to. But she's like, let's go pee. I was like, okay. Cause she was saying that you might not have the urge, but you still have to. And the hardest part not just in the hospital but like in general was moving from position so if i was sitting i was fine but if i was moving from sitting to standing that was crazy and um if i was standing i was fine but if i was moving to sitting that's what really hurt because again i had no core strength like at all like i couldn't really lift my legs like i was like dragging my feet on the floor but when she helped me to go to the bathroom that was hard enough on its own and that first pee compared to the blood pressure headaches man oh my gosh those two were like the most painful pooping that was not bad at all like i literally could just like relax and that was it but peeing oh my gosh like i would i would be like this and i'm like oh, oh like i'd be tightening and it hurts so bad so after i finished peeing it was like a container in there that was like this 
and like this deep and I peed like that much. It was so much. And she helped me get back in the bed and again, I didn't have strength to do nothing and barely talk. And if I were to cry like, <laughs> that would hurt my stomach. So I was just like, and I just had so many tears falling down my face and she was like, are you okay? And I was like, that was so painful. And she was like, okay, like I can give you more medication for the pain, like an extra one on top of the pain medication I was already getting. And I was like, please. And she was like, okay. <laughs> Cause I was quiet. Like I was just like, <laughs> with tears just rolling down my face. So they were giving me stool softeners and I was like, bruh, if it hurt to pee this much, I can't even imagine pooping and pooping that didn't even hurt at all. So maybe it was because I had a catheter in that it hurt so bad. I don't understand too much. Then I got to a point that I could move around a little more. It was still painful, but I wanted to recover. And, and they would be like, call us to go to the bathroom, call us to move. But I was like, no, I got on my own, which was stupid. Don't do that, just call the nurses. And breastfeeding was super difficult too because TMI, but I have really flat nipples. So like, you know how bottles look like and it sticks out like that, like I didn't have that. Like they weren't inverted, but it was just like not a lot for her to grab onto. And they're also really small. So like, they're just like, as long as you have the all the colored parts, so the areola in her mouth, like it's okay. And she would, but it hurt. Like the second day I was like, I cannot take this pain any longer like it hurts so bad but i don't want to stop breastfeeding you know every time that she would get on i felt like she has razor blades for teeth like i don't know i was looking inside her mouth i was like there's no way this girl doesn't have teeth bro it hurts so bad and they gave me like lanolin which was a like, cream for your nipples which get lanolin bro hold up so this is the one that i had bought so it's mother love nipple cream right so it's like a hydrant it did absolutely nothing absolutely nothing this on the other hand lanolin it's for sore nipples so it hydrates them and it's for sore nipples and they got bro they were so sore it was so painful i had to feed her every hour because her blood sugar levels were really low when she was born and they had to check her blood sugar by the heel of her foot and it had to be good five times for them to stop checking it and i heard never wake a sleeping baby so i was like i'm not gonna wake her up and she would fall asleep at the nipple and they i remember once that they had it good for four times and then i messed up and i didn't feed her and then I went down and they're like, you know, we might have to give her formula. And I was like, no, I was like, I didn't get the birth I wanted. I at least want to feed her, you know, and I'm glad the lady talked to me the way that she did. That she's just like, you need to force her to eat, like wake her up if you have to feed her every hour, keep her awake, shake her butt, do what you have to do so that she can eat so that we don't have to keep pricking her feet. I don't like doing it either. I don't like making her cry. And I was like, dang, girl, that's what I needed. And she talked to me like a mama and then i would walk around and stuff which was super painful and i remember when it was time for me to finally leave i didn't want to like i was crying okay, well, i'm making a video because oh. you know with the nurses you press a button and they're there for you at all times hey mommy oh you too mommy like a hika anyway because I could press a button and get all the help that I wanted all throughout the day. Um, and then Salem had her own nurse too. So I was like, I was just really scared to leave. I wanted to be there as long as possible. I was staying with my mom. So once I got finally sent home from the hospital and I didn't have all of that 24 hour help, I was kind of like nervous. Yeah. And so going to the bathroom, going number two didn't hurt, going number one, her like crazy i'd be in the bathroom like ah and they're like what happened and i'm like i'm trying to be <laughs> and it would hurt so bad so they were telling me that the longer i wait to go pee the more it'll hurt because it's pushing against my uterus that one got sliced open and two got a placenta ripped off of it so they told me to pee before i feed her which was a good 
thing to keep track of because then I would be peeing every hour and my bladder wouldn't be getting full. So that is what I was doing and I was, it just was the weirdest feeling to feel so weak, so debilitated, like all the strength that I had in my legs hurt so bad. I couldn't lift my legs up to get in the bathtub. Like I had to have someone bend them in there. Like instead of bending my feet up, I had to like fold them backwards. I don't know if that makes sense. Balloon, balloon, balloon. It's crazy because I got almost like the opposite of postpartum depression because you know how some women like they don't want to take care of their kids. But for me, I was like, I didn't care about myself, like not like in a depressing way that I was like, I hate myself. I loved myself like my stomach. I don't even care. Like I didn't care about nothing when it came to me which was something that was really hard to break out of because it was like a switch that flipped as soon as I gave birth that I just didn't care. And I was like, okay, I gotta take care of this baby. And my mom and my husband had to force me to like take a shot. Ew, don't drink that. I'm not, no, no, no. I'll wash it for you, okay? This thing's been stuck on the floor forever. They would force me to take showers, which I'm really glad they did because that was the one thing that I was like for me. Just so attached to her. Like I couldn't be in a room without her. Like whenever she would be napping, like I had her in the bassinet and I would drag her everywhere. Nobody could touch her, like, except for Daniel. Like, Daniel was the only person I didn't really get mad when he held her. But, like, even, like, my mom and my sister and, like, family members that I love so much, I was like, okay, give her back. <laughs> I was like, she's my child. Like, I don't know. I was like, full bone mama bear. Like, it was kind of weird. So, one of the things that I would have changed is to let myself recover because I was doing way too much. So I think that you're supposed to stop bleeding after three weeks, right? I don't know how it is for a C-section, maybe four. Because with a C-section, you lose one-fifth of your whole body's blood. And you're bleeding from the inside. So like, I wasn't, my incision was fine. It didn't get infected. I didn't even have stitches. Like, there were internal stitches and I had the surgical glue. And it was so sweet. He was like, you look so beautiful. It looks amazing. And that's something I really needed, you know? But anyway, so I was bleeding, and even though I didn't push this baby out, like, not once, like, I wasn't in labor at all, I was still swollen like crazy down there, bro. It looked like a hot dog. <laughs> yeah? So, one, I got breastfeeding help because homegirl was tearing my nipples up because she didn't have a good latch. Because they were like, as long as the color part's in her mouth, which it was, but she didn't have a deep lash. So, thank you to Wick. Um, you saved my life milk and so when i got home i have carpet and i bruh if i could go back in time i smack myself across the head i was i would tie salem on me and i would be vacuuming the carpet which with a vacuum that isn't even for carpet so i have to be there like and then i would do groceries in person and bring it up go up and up and down flight of steps and i was pushing that heavy chopping cart and at one point my incision started swelling and I was bleeding for two months. So eight weeks I was bleeding and I went to my OB and I was like, I can't stop bleeding and I'm swelling. And she was telling me you're doing way too much. Literally, you do like maybe three dishes and you sit down. And I was like, I've been doing groceries and doing all this craziness. She's like, the heck is wrong with you? She's like, you have to recover. So for this baby, I'm gonna sit down on the bed for six weeks straight. I'm gonna get up to use the bathroom and eat and that's it. Like, the stupidest thing I ever did. But, hey, because I compared my C-section to like other women that had C-sections. So like multiple people that had multiple C-sections and then they're like, mine was not as bad as yours. So I don't want you to get scared and think that this is how all C-sections are because Salem, she got stuck and they had to cut me more which was something that I forgot to say, but when they went to the room, the surgeon, he felt so bad, he's so sweet because he was a plastic surgeon, you know? So he thinks that I care about what my incision looks like, <laughs> which again, I don't care whatsoever. Like I literally don't care. Cause right now my incision, it looks like that. And then it has a line like up because he had to cut me extra on my skin. And apparently in my uterus, they had to cut me extra on both sides because she got stuck and they still had to suction her out. So he was saying that and he's like, he's like, we had to cut her more, you know, and once they make the incision, 
it opens up and it looks like a circle so he thought he was gonna make a straight line and then it wasn't and i'm like i don't care and he's like really oh my gosh I can't. and he felt so bad because i guess he thinks i'm gonna be wearing bikinis everywhere but i'm like i don't care at all and my mom was like maybe you ripped open and this and that and i was like i don't care something really cool because like with a c-section when she grows up i can be like look this is where you were born like this is literally a birth mark i could show her like this is where you came out of like i guess with the vaginal birth you can't really do that <laughs> so i could show her right now my incision it just looks like a little line and it goes up like this it looks like a smirk <laughs> kind of and it's like and i have a bump above it so i guess that's where the, the scar tissue is and my skin tightened and it was like that so I have like a little bump and then the incision is right under it so this is where I was cut inside and this is under it because they cut six layers so that's gonna be a little bit of a bump but again I don't care whatsoever she's here she's healthy I'm healthy it took me a long time to recover because again I was doing stupid things to try to make myself recover like I was pushing this girl's stroller in the sand like what the heck <laughs> be smart like let yourself recover that's the smartest thing that you can do i know for me since i'm like moving around all the time it was hard but you have to do that like you have to so that is a story about my c-section if you have to have a c-section it's not going to be this bad just let yourself recover let yourself recover take it easy don't even try to push yourself like that take that out the window like pushing yourself past your limits or to your limits throw that out the window like i had to start wait until i was eight months postpartum to start exercising like in any way because i had messed myself up so bad right after i gave birth that i had to wait even longer all push-ups like that like little things like that um and take it super easy take it slow because you just gave birth like that is a traumatic thing for the woman's body yes your body is meant to go through it but you have to let it let yourself recover that's the best advice like anytime i go to a baby shop i'm like what advice i'm like let yourself recover take it easy don't do anything period but yeah that's it <laughs>